Welcome to This Academic Life, Episode 10. Hi, I'm Lucy Zhang. I'm a professor in mechanical engineering. Hi, I'm Pania Newell. I'm an assistant professor in mechanical engineering. Hi, my name is Kim Michelle Lewis, associate dean of research and professor of physics. Welcome. Today we wanted to have a very brief conversation about an opportunity that I had to serve as a panelist with Jennifer Granholm, who is the United States Secretary of Energy. On Monday, May 3rd, 2021, Secretary Granholm visited Howard University in Washington, D.C. to discuss a very critical issue that affects historically black colleges and universities and that is the inequity in research funding from federal programs such as the Department of Energy. The panel was composed of faculty members from Howard University and administration. So I wanted the opportunity for my co-hosts to ask me questions about some of the topics that were discussed. So she picked Howard because she has potential funding opportunities or she'd like to discuss some topics to get feedback from Howard in order to design some of these uh, research directions for Department of Energy? It was actually both. So she came to discuss initiatives that the Department of Energy had put forth to help with research funding at HBCUs. And then she wanted to say, what more can she do? What are my blind spots? What am I missing? Is there something else that I can help with? So that was the, the basis of the conversation. That is so cool. So what is the topic? Is it more focused on STEM in general? Or is this just any topic related to energy? Does it include, say, policy or any political science or just STEM? The focus was primarily on STEM funding and opportunities. One of the items discussed was that although a lot of federal research funding is provided to universities, very little is awarded to HBCUs. For example, according to a January 2021 report by the Center for the Study of HBCUs stated that, and I quote, less than 1.7% of the 5 billion in National Science Foundation grants were awarded to HBCUs, end quote. And it was mentioned in this same report, and I quote, an NSF report indicated that among the top 30 institutions receiving federal research and development support between 2016 to 2018, none were HBCUs, end quote. So there is a gap in the overall federal research funding awarded to HBCUs. Secretary Granholm wanted to hear our perspective on the reasons for the inequity in research funding and approaches as to how to close that gap. Do we know what that gap is right now? And what is her goal of reaching to fill that gap? So she asked us that, like, what, what is this gap about? And we told her that, for example, my answer was definitely lack of research infrastructure, like buildings, like you know, we, we need money to fund more modernized buildings that would allow us to build more modernized laboratories for research. I also mentioned that the teaching load for faculty at some HBCUs is relatively high. And as a result, that kind of hinders how much time they have to do research. And then I mentioned that not having the research laboratories on a campus basically keeps us from competing because for most of these grants, you need preliminary data. So if you don't have a modernized or high-tech research lab to collect the data, then you have no preliminary results, which is one of the bases, right, as you know, to get this funding. And then I also mentioned there could be some unconscious bias in the review process when it comes to reviewing proposals from faculty members that are at historically black colleges and universities. Actually, as a former member of the Department of Energy Labs, I agree with the last point. I think there are 
unconscious biases among the reviewers and also there are some biases towards uh, top universities. For instance, if you are coming from a very five top universities, automatically the reviewers, they have different assessment of your work and the work that is proposed by, by, by other researchers from schools that they are not high ranked. So I think that might have been one of the hurdle points of uh, not getting enough funding uh, and not enough funding going to those the schools. But did she talk about uh, opportunities for small businesses? Because the Department of Energy has a lot of money, I guess to uh, all agencies, I guess 20, 25% of their funding goes towards those opportunities. Did she speak about those? No, she didn't. Outside of what I mentioned earlier, she definitely spoke about the the partnerships between HBCUs and government laboratories, such as like Brookhaven National Lab, for example, but not necessarily the small business opportunities. So I know that they have a lot of fellowships opportunities for graduate students. And during my time at the DOE labs, I noticed that very, very highly qualified graduate students, uh, they came through those opportunities to the labs to do their summer internship. Did she talk about increasing those opportunities and providing more opportunities for graduate students from historically black universities? Yes, she did. And it was commendable the the amount of funds and the efforts and additional opportunities that her administration is going to provide. But one of the, the critical pieces is trying to make sure that we don't always need to send the students away to get that experience. So at other schools, you can have multiple SEMs and FTIRs and all of the high-end instrumentation right there on their campus. And they may they can hold their own summer programs. And their students can just stay on campus and have that same experience without going to the national labs. That is what we really need at the HBCUs. We need the ability to access these high-end instrumentation on the campus itself. And the commitment has to be for not just this administration, but it has to go on for, for decades in order for us to catch up. Exactly. Um, it's a systemic and, issue. So you can't just say, today I'm going to dump all these money and then let's make magic happen. Uh, it won't work. It, it's, uh, it needs a long time and infrastructure rebuilding. Absolutely. Right, right. That's exactly it. So, and I, I mentioned that it was important to kind of take advantage of the expertise that already exists on the campus. And for that, the Biden-Harris administration, they are proposing to have what they're calling centers of excellence that are housed at these HBCUs. And I think that's an excellent opportunity because now you can brand a particular HBCU for a particular STEM area of field, right? So you can say Howard is the hub for all things hybrid electronic devices or something like that. And then Hampton University is the hub for spectroscopy. So then you now are branding a school with a particular area of expertise and then you can start having external users instead of us going to or students going to Brookhaven National Lab or to another laboratory. Then other schools nationally, they can send their students and say, oh, Howard University has a focus ion beam that get the best resolution, et cetera, et cetera. And then that would be great. And so then we would more or less work like a network. I love and, that. And I think that would strengthen the idea. That's wonderful. Are there any specific plans that say if this fund or series of funds are coming through, are, are you going to plan it, starting to plan it now? Or she had already have something in mind and say, here are some of the things that we can do and go ahead and implement them. Where are we in that process? I think she mentioned that there are plans, like she has some initiatives that she was going to start and the Biden-Harris administration also had initiatives. I think the way it's going to be implemented may not be completely flushed out. And I suspect that 
the, the discussions are going to continue. I also think that she may engage us again in terms of getting ideas about the best way to implement that. So that's what we're hoping for, that there will be a follow-up conversation <laughs> to kind of flush out some ideas. But I also do think there's already a team of people in place on the Biden-Harris team that will help flush out those details. And I don't know if I'll get the opportunity to be at the table um, for that discussion, but I, I would definitely love the opportunity um, because one thing I realize is that often people think that all HBCUs are the same, like there's this one size fit all model, and that's not really true. So every, every HBCU is known for something, and I would love to see us capitalize on that and make sure the appropriate resources go to the right school for the right thing. So I think there needs to be a, a true conversation so that it's not something that's forced on the schools and they're really able to say, no, our faculty, we're good at machine learning. We're good at computational this. We need, we would like to see a center of excellence that focus on this area. And then I think it will be a win-win for both sides if they, if, you know, we approached it in that way. That's fantastic. I love it. Well, one thing that we have to mention here, uh, Kim made it to the Washington Post. <laughs> this is really, really, really important. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to post that link uh, in the show notes here. Yeah, that was, I was humbled because there were so many people on that panel. And for the writer, the staff writer to choose me to quote, I was just like, I just was humbled by the that the, was, the, the that words was really that game. yeah the words that they put out on that on that article it was beautifully said I think that's why it made it up there um, it's very important that we are representing that's very important I'm glad they did I was wondering these things that you talk about these are in my opinion they are long-term plans but what were her short-term plan because if we wait we say oh let's have a building let's have a center of excellence let's have this and that nothing is going to happen in short term right so what are the immediate action items that she's going to take care of now to help with these historically black uh, universities faculty staff and also students at all these three levels so i think that some of the short-term plans or may will start immediately such as the internship opportunities that uh, that she spoke about i'm not sure when we will see like the center of excellence come about because i just don't know where they are in their planning but i think that, for example, a one faculty member who was there received funding, I think, through one of these initiatives. And so he was there to talk about how important it was for him to receive this huge DOE grant at an HBCU. So I think it's already started, but I think the Center of Excellence probably will not be one of the short-term items because I think they really have to flush that out to make sure that it's done well. That's my impression. So one thing, I mean, obviously I'm not part of their team or I'm not in any historically black universities, but in my opinion, one quick thing is probably getting faculty invited for the review panels or giving them small funding seed grants that they start advising PhD students or master students that they become potentially a pipeline for even DOE labs, right? Instead of investing in uh, schools that they are already high ranked and they have all these resources, everybody pours money at them. I think that that might be a possibility and also providing opportunities for faculty to do sabbaticals at the at the labs. Uh, I think these would be, uh, they are, in my opinion, they are really low hanging fruits that it can help to create a more inclusive environment within the DOE and also uh, within the funding agencies. Sounds like we can be the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time they should invite me in the panel and I'll give them all the advice. Maybe I should be an advisory board to them. <laughs> so. 
I think Panya, you mentioned pipeline. This is sort of a a topic that many agencies are not talking about.、Uh, not just related to big center grants, but they、uh, some of those、uh, training or educational type of grants. They're really focused on pipelines, building pipelines. And you're basically building bottom up, and that's what's missing. We can't just always looking at over here and then put money there. But from how do we build it up, right? So that's where it's lacking right now. And building that pipeline that you mentioned is so important. Yes. So, so I think that、uh, retention and also encouraging、uh, kids at very young age to go to a STEM program. It makes a huge difference, and it's not as also Kim mentioned. It's not like oh, let's go to these colleges and handpick people and train them, and they become the stars of the future. It needs to be a long term initiative, and it has to be a grassroots. But there are, I guess, long term and short term, they go hand in hand. Yeah, I agree. You know, one other thing that for me, a very untapped resource. Undeclared science majors or undeclared students at universities. I was amazed at the number of students that come into the College of Engineering. I mean, this is across the two universities that I worked at, and the, a College of Science or a School of Science that are undeclared. And I. Won the NSF Career Award, and then in that broader impact, I said I'm going to grab these students <laughs> and bring them to my lab. And I did a program called Undeclared Science Majors. So every year, I would ask the dean, the office of the dean, to provide me the names of undeclared science majors in the school, and then I would reach out to them and say, Hey, I have an opportunity in my lab. I know you're undeclared science,、uh, undeclared science major, but come hang out. I'll give you a project. And my goal was to get them off that track, <laughs> and it worked. I, I had a student recently found me. He's now at a, a company in、um, Boston, and he said how that like changed. I won't go as so far to say his life, but changed his experience. That I pulled him as a freshman and said. Hey, you're undeclared science. Let's do some work in my lab. And he said it was a great experience, and he just was so thankful that I provided him that opportunity as a freshman. And I just felt so rewarded. Just this one student that you have this idea in your head, you don't know if it's gonna work, and that's for me the best part about being a faculty member. It's just that that's all you need is the one student to come back and say thank you, Dr. Lewis. Thank you, Professor Lewis. That was a great experience, and、mm. for me, that was one of the highlights of like the results from my NSF career. <laughs>、well, mm, mm, mm. Little things, little things matter a lot.、Yes. You know, these are efforts that you put in, and you don't really see the results when you put it in, but you have to do it. Right, so I, I yeah, I love that. This is、uh, you know one of those things that everybody should be thinking about. Absolutely. Well, well, Kim, we you have to、uh, keep us updated on this. Yes, I'm very excited. I, yes, yes. I, I will.、Um, I will definitely do that. And thanks for the two of you supporting me. Exactly. <laughs> This is why we're here. This is、right. why we're here. Yes. Or our goal is to make an impact, and this is the outlet for it. <laughs> right. I hope that this conversation has brought some awareness to the inequity in research funding at HBCUs. It was a rewarding experience to have the opportunity to serve as a panelist along with my Howard University colleagues and administration to discuss this important issue with Jennifer Granholm, the Secretary of Energy. Please see our show notes for the link to the recorded panel discussion with Secretary Jennifer Granholm and the Washington Post write-up. Thank you so much for listening. We hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Find us at thisacademiclife.org. Or follow us on Facebook. You can listen to our latest episodes on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or Google Podcasts. Please rate us. We welcome any feedback or suggestions for future episodes. Join us next time for the good, the bad, and the ugly of this academic life.